So for today's subdivision extravaganza, I figured we could do this energy tank. I was actually watching a Metroid Prime long play and this fusion tank showed up, or actually a missile tank, and I was just thinking, huh, that's perfect. Because I've been playing PS1, I was gonna actually get a PS1 asset and do that because it would be so blurry, which just makes it funnier and harder. And when I do images, I like to keep it kind of abstract, you know, nothing strictly adhered to. Less rules, the better for me. So let's take a look at what we have here. We're gonna strictly adhere to the rules of this image, just kidding. So, you know me, we're gonna start with a cylinder. How many la layers of paint do we want? You know, 32 will do us. And since we're starting out from a cylinder, uh, we have a couple of choices ahead of us. I'm going to use some box cutter. Let's set our rounds to 32 so we activate what I call coincidence, which is basically us being able to perfectly union these things because of them meeting up. So first we'll do a cut, do a join. We could have also done a bunch of extrudes. Really doesn't matter how you do it. It's just today a, a new box cutter came out, so might as well give box cutter a little play. In addition to the generous amount of play, I always give it because I am box cutter's biggest fan. So we'll cut another one inside. This time we'll press T, press S and scale it down. Since our uh, origin point is always set to center, we'll always be able to scale and it won't sink into the surface because we have our origin specifically where we want it all the time. So this object's gonna get a little complicated. We're just gonna apply everything. And I chose to apply through visual apply, but with box cutter, we can always click the smart apply and it will apply it and get rid of the cutters. And since we're given mesh machine, it's time too. If we press Alt X, we can just gesturally mirror this to the proper sides, which means that we can basically grab all these faces. Let's just press Control T, Alt J, and call it a day. And with this area, let's just Control Shift B to bevel just a vert, which will also turn it into a circle. And we're already in a pretty good place with this, but really it's about to begin getting dicey. So. This thing has like some pieces coming out on the side and I was like thinking maybe I can do them separately, but you know, as I look at it, I'm like, man, I'm not even gonna be able to be accurate with this image. You know, already losing confidence in myself, but we're gonna just plow through that. Right click after selecting these two edges, we're just gonna subdivide, mirror that to the other side. I know risky decision, but it's a little fatty. You know, there's no denying that. It's a little fatter than I'm, I'm giving it credit for, and to do it then would be an injustice. So, you know me, and attempting to add additional levels of pain to the modeling at hand, just to make it a little more entertaining for you viewers. So, really just kind of analyzing it with this transition with this area. There's like a ring around it too, so might as well do the ring too. I mean, it's kind of hard to see, that's blurry images for you, you know, but in my life, everything's a blurry image. Like I was modeling this helicopter and over the time of modeling it, I was like, man, I probably could have chose a less blurry image, <laughs> but I mean, you're also probably saying, you know, or a reference, but I don't know. I get my jollies from just trying it loose. So also we see that there might be a slope happening along this ring. And that's something we didn't account, didn't account for. So we could basically grab all of this and Alt S push it out and then remirror it to the other side and then do our work all over again, which could be a thing. In fact, let's just do that just because, you know, I'm, I'm seeing hallucinations in the surface, which is just the, uh, it comes with the territory of blurry photographs. Kind of reminds me of a um, alternative song, but let's just continue. This time I'll try to not get as sidetracked as I have previous. So let's just select these edges, even though we can't see them, just gotta trust in our eagle eye. And we'll press C because, you know, just clicking over and over is gonna get insane. So 
let's bring this out. Let's grab these pieces. SX, we'll just flatten it out, bring it back out, just kind of aiming for the image. I mean, depending on our level of adherence that we really want to get with this picture is how insane things will get with us. But as usual, my keystrokes are being displayed in the corner of the screen, hopefully minimizing the need to actually narrate every single key I'm pressing, like control shift tab to bring up this snap to menu. So that way we can snap to this area and just end that insanity. But I'm thinking, do we need to possibly flatten it plainerly though? Because it feels a little bulgy too, which is just unnatural. I mean, I'm even willing to go so far as to bring this over in order to match this. And then we re it over and just not talk about that again, you know. But looking at this thing, we see that our troubles aren't over. So we also need to grab this edge, bring it up on the Z, and make it congruent with this for it, just basically making it flat. And we need to bring it up on a slope, you know. Like I said, the pain never ends. You survive one battle only to walk into another. So let's subdivide S, Y. And we're just really having some fun with modeling here. Like I said, I could just be, I, I need to do more time lapses so I could just zone out and actually relax. But we're actually working on a tool around that concept. So hopefully that will result in far more time lapses in the future, especially for these things I always talk about that are never recorded. Because so much is never recorded. The best tutorials, never recorded. You know, it's only when I'm done, I'm like, wow, that was just great. It's probably great because I wasn't under the pressure of having to perform on a camera. So I'm always trying to reduce that pressure. Just cut loose, you know. Have fun. Pretend like uh, you guys are my buddies. So let's press C. We'll cut up to here, which you're probably wondering, why is he doing this? Also, why is he merging there? Just sacrificing the sanctity of the circle's innocence? I don't know. I see a bevel. And if it doesn't have a bevel, it needs a bevel. You know, it's not against the law to just give it a bevel. And normally I actually stay away from anything IP related. However, this asset is so basic that hopefully uh, Metroid Prime Other M won't come after me. I mean, no awards actually came after the game, so, and n neither did a request for a sequel. I mean, Federation Hunters was, you know, that's getting on a whole nother topic, but I worry about the Metroid trilogy. You know, people want them to re-release the old ones again. Get out of here. We already played them. We've seen it. It was a thing. I'm not even going to go so far as to give a hot take of it being, you know, terrible, but I could run through Metroid Prime again. You know, I could jam the soundtrack, though. Soundtrack's fantastic, but game is all right. It's like uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2, you had to have been there, but after seeing how 3 went, nah, I don't know. So we're just sliding around verts, talking about Kingdom Hearts, you know. Are you are you a Sora? No, I'm kidding. Or are you a Riku? And this thing, I'm assuming, is going three ways. I mean, sometimes I'll just be complaining about a process, and by the time I'm done complaining, the process is done. So we just brought in a plane, merged it at center, and then extruded it out. And I'm just going to rotate it over. We're going to rotate this on the modifier and then from here we're just going to radial array around this object but we're going to choose three and you think that we're almost done but we have to unparent this so we have to clear the parent and keep the transformation which means that now we can rotate this single edge and we just want these edges to match up and i wonder if there's a way to actually get this absolutely perfect for our needs in an automated fashion, but you know, sometimes I'll go through the pain manually a thousand times just to really understand the process and also demonstrate it to you guys and set up a history of it so it's not a big surprise that it suddenly got automated down the road. So maybe something like that. However, I just don't trust what I'm looking at with this radial array. So let's go back into 
radial array and we just roll our count we're down to three so if we cut this area and then we triplicate it you know what I think it is is the modifiers are getting out of order but you know let's just shift click smart apply to get a clone and we're just going to trust in what I'm looking at as far as the main one so by shift clicking knife which is actually working in 2.93 but it's getting weird in 3.0 at this time you know, my condolences to anyone who runs into that bug. It's not our fault. Let's just grab our edge. Let's take it in local mode so we don't see anything else. And we just want to grab the edge, basically the new edge, the only one that we can trust. And we'll press V to rip it off. Press L to select it because we ripped it. And we could either press P to separate it, but I'm going to press Control I and just delete the inverse, which I think we took out more than we wanted, but you know, that's life. And with the shape, is this shape union? Uh, yeah, this shape's union to it, so it's throwing me off. So what we're gonna do is radial array around to three, and we see that we actually made a mistake. So let's undo all the way and try this whole technique again. So I gotta go out of local mode, See how much it'll let me undo. Apparently a lot. You know, Blender's undo can be uh, painful sometimes, but sometimes it just does its job, like right there. I mean, I really have these opportunities where it's just golden. So we are going to delete these modifiers again. And this is what we have, and we want to radial array this. So let us just control click and we set it to three and this time we'll rotate it without doing the unparenting. So more than likely it was the unparenting. So like I said, there's a degree of understanding I need to have in a process before we dare attempt to automate it. And this is it. This is me kind of getting in there and understanding it because you know by the time I request it I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like look guys I've done this a, a hundred million times we gotta we gotta do something I can't do it a hundred million and one that's the one that'll get me we gotta solve this on the nifty you know that's why I said origin was born I mean I really need to go back and do a video talking about that one more in depth especially in the direction that we've taken it now but I think people can read the tooltip and they get a pretty good idea so that sounds terrible but it is really in the tooltip just read it we transfer origins now which makes work the corner just so much easier and a lot crazier like I need to finish the sharing of radial arrays but we'll come back to that and we just want to place our bull in at the end and let's also get a weld in here to marry our family together really it doesn't matter because we're going to need to you know kind of recircle things but a weld will at least get this thing acting right just look at the wireframe and more than likely it's because of the loops just being so close so we could deal with that in fact, you know me in radial arrays, I'll also add a mirror on top, which for this we need to apply the rotation. And then when we add a mirror, let's see, why is our rotation looking crazy? Alt X, bisect and modifier, we split it, we take the mirror straight to the top. And this is what we have. So this means that we only have to modify one side. So I'm just going to press period and use the period, the pivot point of the 3D cursor and just rotate this geometry a little bit. I know this probably hurts people inside every time I do this, but I've been experimenting with using loop tools, circle and stuff like that in the workflow as well while just discussing this, but it just makes things so messy. Um, I'll have to get back to that, but you know, not trying to demonstrate absolute failure cases, but or or rag on the thing. I love loop tools, circle, but it definitely isn't so good at recircling sometimes. It gives me some problems, so you'll see me take some liberties with a circle, kind of kind of loose with my circle, but 
There is something weird with the shading. And I believe that it's because we need to place our weld after the array. And look at the difference, you know, in modifier order. Um, people sometimes will comment and ask if I could do something talking about how you use particular modifiers. And really when it comes to modifiers in my approach, they have a differing use. Sometimes you want a modifier really early in a stack. Sometimes you want a bevel very early. But you'll see a ton of videos by me where I'll use a bevel strictly as a finisher. So what do we want to do with this? I can't judge. Oh, man. Actually, I was about to say I can't judge this image. And all of a sudden, I was able to judge it. And the image judged me back. The image said, hey, man. You could do one bevel, but you can't round me out, bro. Is what this image just told me. And it also said, hey, you're going to need to cut out a chunk and then repeat it twice in order to, wow, this shape. All right, so we have a kind of negative end cut piece, and then there's a little trim around if we really judge this blurry image. I could have got a sharper image, but I don't know. Blurry images are funny. And we're just going to assume that this ring is supposed to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to select all of this. Our pivot point is still the 3D cursor. So if we press S, Shift, and Z, we can scale out and just keep that. With this edge, I'm just going to slide it at this edge, slide it back. may not be absolutely straight, but we could make it absolutely straight. And that would require that we also do the same thing with this edge, slide it all the way up, slide it back, because it's holding the shape down. Same thing with this one. We could just dissolve it and re-add it. Same with this one, which will definitely linearize it, but wasn't trying to do all of that, especially because we started kind of messing with our flow happening in this area. And that sends me into the negotiation process, which I'm not trying to get into just yet. Right now, we're just trying to block the shape and really have some fun with it. And judging how we're going to do this non-destructively, but also carry it along the way that we need it to. So really a, a ponder there. But because I'm recording, I don't have long to ponder. So knifeity knife, solve some strife. You know, when you see a thing that needs to be in a thing, knife, just knife. Knife is my first option. You know, the knives come out. So for this area, it's like, maybe I don't want to de really destroy what we've built there. So I'm going to subdivide, which will put a loop here. Subdivide's really crazy with the way that it will just place a loop on a bunch of edges. Like I could select all these edges and subdivide and suddenly there's a loop going across it. And loop cut wouldn't be able to cross all of these tries. It's just subdivide. Subdivide's just really um, your friend. So our 3D cursor's here. I don't think we ever changed it back. So I'm just gonna press E, R, X, and we're just gonna rotate that inward because we are looking at something like that really. And we're just gonna turn the Boolean off because that's just gonna make things really complicated and weird as things go, as time goes on. This one, merge at last, select these two at last. And hmm, for this one, we are just going to delete this edge, which is definitely going to expose a hole meaning that we can add a loop here and solve this and really think about how we want to do this. So this is what a linear solve would look like for this particular area if we just don't care. But really we need to press J between these two points to really fill in the blank for the surface because we're looking at something incomplete. If we take these and mark them as sharp, we can just come back to it later. But really everything that we're doing at this particular phase, we have to account for with like surviving subdivision because of the uh, mission stipulations for the course of this month. So with that in mind, I gotta change my rhetoric a little bit. So we are going to need to do very planar and easily solvable cuts. No, I'm kidding, but literally, like, um, one thing you guys should notice over the course of these videos is, you know, there's no room to talk about design when you're dealing with, like, this stipulative classical style 
modeling. Like, there's no room to discuss really anything. I mean, you could make some jokes while you're dealing with some loops, of course, but as far as design goes, there's no talk about design because you ain't changing a thing. We are in the world of finality right now. Like, what we're putting better be right because changing it is going to be a pain in the ass. And that's just life, you know, that's a part that I really haven't talked about a lot is just the finality of this whole process. And, you know, even on the, um, the power washer part I did recently, I've been working on the, uh, a video where I want to come back and do an edit and just the memories of editing subdivision geometry. It's like, Ooh, this is terrible. You know, you got proportional edit. It's like your buddy. But proportional edit's not going to save you when it comes to preserving sharps and you're moving like some serious steel geometry. And we have a big geometric congestion happening here. Let's see what our Boolean gives us. And that's going to be added to our result. Really, we don't have to append this piece. Let's just bring it back. And we're just going to shift click shade solid to make it real again. And then we're just going to delete the Boolean from this mesh. So now we have this very real mesh that we're just going to put a bevel on, give it a three, which means it will now survive subdivision. So, you know, that's the end of that object story for now. We, we'll come back to it, but merging it in, um, don't got to make it absolutely painful. Could also be talking about working smart, you know, making copies. No, I'm kidding, but seriously, we're about to be making some copies of this masterpiece because if it solves for subdivision, then yeah, I'm not drawing this again. So we are going to replicate it until we are successful. And let's select these three, S, Z, zero, and you know, really getting kind of, kind of tight with our geometry. I mean, we could give this a bevel to space it out, but these two are gonna need to form a bond these two are going to need to form a bond, even though they don't look very cohesive. Let's just merge. And this area is going to require reinforcement at some point. Just, I can see into the future, which we can just use that for this area to solve. And there's no need for all this solving because I don't even know if this geometry truly has integrity. I mean, look at it, that integrity. I mean, it's a big end gone too, so probably doesn't have integrity. It happens. Let's realign it. Let's select these two points, press J, these two, and just kind of whatever that. So, I mean, we're not really trying to go all sub D with it, but we do want to make it where when we sub D, we don't have to um, come back to this later. Also, this geometry is kind of mysterious. I'm going to turn off the weld display in edit mode. And we see that Weld's gonna be um, beating us up here. So really that should be addressed early. Like really the geometry needs to be laying on top of them. Never mind, I was about to make a terrible uh, joke. Can't help but get topical with what I see on the news for it is always so ridiculous. Not even politically. Just people, you know, the legendary Florida man. He lives on and remains very real. And the thing is, is if you're living in Florida, you could just become him. It's not even, are you born him or it just happens. You might just get real mad at a grocery store and just become the legend. That means there's like a super max prison holding like a ton of Florida men, like a task force X. Sorry, just rewatch Suicide Squad. So I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's just add some subdivision on it and see what we're dealing with. And at least we see that we have a good solution going while I'm just talking nonsense. And let's just take this area, place it here, place this area here, and got this kind of weird try solution, but Tell you, I'm kind of experimental with my solutions. 
Like, I feel like tries might not have a place. No, I'm kidding. They do. But you just got to be real sparing with them. I'm not going to get all crazy like I would on an 8-vert eight, eight cylinder solve, but we just want something that's going to survive subdivision and just at least look suitable for our big date. I mean, really, you can just zone out in some geometry, and even more so in a reference image. You know, you start using a reference, you've already failed. You'll never get it. It's already been made. You'll never replicate. No, I'm kidding. Just get all demotivational in a video. So we got to place this piece here, and then that will place it around, and then we give it three legs. We call it a day. However, we do have to tighten up our solution in this area because it's just not, not the best. And also, we have to mirror it because, I mean, actually, yeah, if this thing's being radial, this thing's being mirrored and then it's being radial. All right, so it's fine for now. And really judging it on its subdivision merits is a little cruel so early, especially when we've done no reinforcement for the top area. It's just oatmeal upstairs. So we really got to get down to nitty gritty, nitty gritty kitty of this. In fact, I mean, once we start cleaning our way up this thing like a, uh, like a Dallas Cowboy run on a good year, it starts looking a lot better, but definitely got to define that geometry. Subdivision is a cruel mistress and also never look at it in edit mode. It just sets you up for pain. I mean, Blender gives it to you by default. Not, not saying it's a bad decision, just for sub D, I bet sub D likes it. And we got this big pole in the middle. It's like, what are we going to do with this Toyota pole? I'm going to dissolve it. And we are going to dissolve it and resolve it. However, I don't like all this geometry building up on these edges. It's not... However, if I get drastic and we just start trying it out and then re in it, it's going to get weird. I don't know if our cylinder can actually hold such surface compromising geometric changes. For example, something like that as an optimization technique. All right, so my editor tapped my shoulder and said the topology is fine, just move along now. So sometimes you need that. And what I'll do is just select these edges and work. we'll work our way up the racetrack and let's really start setting up this nasty junction area. Let me tell you. Nobody wants to deal with that. Let me tell you. But some of that howdy duty, man. All of this duty. Howdy. Howdy duty. But don't worry. I am really negotiable with my edge work. Like I see in my head this tension and I'm just... Try to relax it. I mean, I also imagine UVing sometimes, even though I'm not UVing in these videos. I could just imagine what it'd be like UVing and which areas would be distorting based on Blender, which isn't the most versatile UV unwrapper as it is. So you got to be really um, crazy with your surfaces in that regard as well. But that's a talk for another day. Also, I think I have a video talking about that already. All right, so, ooh, hard decisions to be made. We're gonna make that decision. Not the best decision, I know. And for this one, we're gonna choose to tighten up the edge, which is a sacrifice of some curvature. And so with this cluster selected, we're just gonna slide it along a little bit Grab this edge, slide it, and let's really take a good look at what we have going with our edge. 
I mean, we're sliding this around like it's just good to go, but we got such tension that needs alleviation. Insert cancel joke. And let's look at this area too. I'm just gonna select it. We'll give it boundary protection. So, you know, whenever you start locking it in on the geo side, you know, you're locking it in on the design side. No more talking about design. Don't, don't tell me, hey, this is, not, I mean, I'm not saying in general, but just, um, you know, on a, on a rant, you know, don't, don't tell me that uh, I gotta make changes because you know, the geometry's finalized. I'm, just, I'm not saying in general, I'm just saying in the context of a model because of all the subdivision geo, but changes come hard. And we'll just diamond quad that. I mean, if we want to quad everywhere we go, there are techniques for getting rid of both ingons and quads. It's just how do you want to go about doing it? Because I mean, something's going to get something's going to get redirected hard, you know, and and something's going to receive a whole bunch of poles in the mail. You know, some geo's going to receive a bunch of poles in the mail. You know, who are these poles for? These poles for uh, Mister Insert you know your name here he order about eight million poles like i'm about to order a bunch of poles but i can't risk it so let's press i because i do want to protect the perimeter but but i don't want this to exist as a perimeter so we're really consolidating our geo there which i know really icky but Hard decisions, you know, geometry is just hard decisions to me. Especially these uh, traditional style techniques. I mean, we're just doing this for, we're just actually going for this all quad for the lulls at this point. Cause I mean, if you've seen any of my previous content, we could get to the finish line so fast. It just depends on what your finish line is. However, let's take this piece and let's control X and we want to bring in a loop like this. So that way we can bring these two in. We'll dissolve this piece and form a connection. There's our pole. Like I said, someone's going to receive a whole bunch of poles in the mail and we have our flow, but at what cost? At what cost? All right, continuing on, looking into the eye of our tragedy, but look at us, we have a decent transition happening with this normally troublesome surface. I mean, it's not it's troublesome on a topological level, so there's just no winning. All you gotta do is just avoid it from um, destroying your home base. So let's subdivide, so that way we can bring in a loop that's terminated short, and we just form this connection and we give this loop to this loop for a reinforcement. Let's also slide it at this edge, make it a little bit tighter. Really just getting um, intimate with this, but we might as well jump into the reinforcement process before I start seeing additional things in the concept image again. Like I said, once you start doing your edges like this, this is a finality. And you know it's not a finality is having these dang loops going all the way up in here like this. Like, I don't know who these loops are. One of these loops is a stranger and needs to leave right now. All right, sorry. Just had to send some loops home. We rather have that be a redirect and destroy the sanctity of our beautiful circle. More than we already have. But, you know, like I said, I, I get kind of ugly with circles, but if it mattered, we could recircle it and shift our, our way to success. I should probably show that in a video, but like I said, it's, it's experimental with getting it to work. So maybe something like, you know what? We're going to need to deselect all these big loops up top, which we could have added those to a group and then reselected them later. But let us bevel according to this single edge. And we realize that we need to just deselect everything else except for that one edge because I'm not going to limit my solution on everything to just this single edge. That's just cruel. This edge is like, how did I get caught up in this? 
I didn't want to get beveled. I hear you. You know, the edges, they call out to me. They tell me things like, jump off my balcony. <laughs> and hit the accelerator. I'm kidding. Uh, it have, yeah, edges talk to me even while I'm driving. You know, even when I'm having dinner. They're like, eat the fork eat the fork. I mean, especially poles. You see some poles sometimes since a model's so bad. They'll haunt you later. They'll tell you stuff in your dreams. But anyways, we got dark there. Not really, but um, we were able to survive the ordeal. And basically, this is our mesh at this point, at least capable of surviving some subdivisions. So, you know, talks get weird around subdivision corner. You know, what else is there to talk about? I pressed E, you guys. I'm sorry. I gotta stop making jokes about that. But now I'm on Mark. I mean, now I'm on Knife. And instead of Star, I'm gonna jump to Polygon. Because Polygon's just so good. And because we're using Subdiv rules, I might as well cut using an eight round circle because we're out of the uh, Polygon torture aspect of things. And if we put it there, We'll be right back in Polygon Torture Town, but uh, you know what? I never learned. Let's press spacebar and see what we got. So, you know, this is just another one of those games I like to call making decisions. You know, who's the most important? You know, these aren't important. These belong to him or her. You know, I'm not. I'm not really uh, that picky about my geometry. Um, that though. That, that's a, <laughs> I was about to say that's a woman's bevel. Let's press control B and see what our options are at the bottom. And we have the option V for affecting edges. No, that's not what we want. Um, wow, there's a lot of stuff at the bottom. No wonder I never really mess with this too much. Let's press M and go with mode offset. What mode is this? whatever it is, I'm not returning to it. So I'm just looking to see if there's any way we can use bevel to space this geometry out evenly. And there isn't. So what's the answer? You got three seconds to comply. It's I. It's I. I and B. I just got your back, I'm telling you. As many times as I've used I and B, it's just a blender classic. So let's press circle and we'll scale this in. And looking at my clock, I'm really not doing that bad on time for a guy who's making this and also converting it to subdivision at the same time. You know, subdivision is the last division you'll ever make. Just kidding. That sounds really um, dark. But, you know, subdivision's on some OG rules, man. Rules were written in, like, the 1500s by... Cat Mole and Fong, you know, Fong was a guy too. Made a shader before computers existed, but I'm trying to get into all that. So we'll do a couple of redirects just to relax our solution. We'll let it try, hold that corner, and we have a nice radial setup, which means we don't have to deal with it later. And let's place our weld at the end. And we also want to save this as missile pod and it's also a topo study because we're studying the topology versus just getting through this design and calling it a day and sli slippity slice make it real nice you know the usual box cutter way instead we're just partying i mean right now it looks a little weird because we have auto smooth on we could turn it off and really admire the subdivision result you know really get in here with the space mouse and just start admiring what we have done. But really, as always, never admire your work. I mean, maybe you can when you're done, but I never admire mine. On the um, hops cord, we have a area for art and you'll never see me post in there because I'm always doing studies. But I do gotta shift into the artwork. 
In fact, this is some artwork of sorts. I mean, this is uh, Metroid Other M's artwork. Depends on how you feel about the game. Like I said, it was a controversial title. And maybe this edge is a little tight. Can't even see it that good. If we dissolve this, then we're truly at the mercy of that edge and just really analyzing what we have going on here. And we've created this piece and we never talked about its transfer over to this side. So I never said it was gonna be easy or fun and it's gonna be neither. It's gonna be just, uh, is how I feel. Actually, no, I just realized sometimes I'll be complaining about something and the solution will come to me. Not saying that you should complain about things because it will help you, but I don't know. Um, definitely a technique we use a lot on team. Just, just, just complain about it out loud. You know, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, Proxy, I don't understand what you're saying. He's like, I know, but I think I got the solution. So we want to use Curve Extract. So if we hover over it, I'm holding down left mouse button. If we hover over it, we see that Control Click will make a new object from Extraction. Let's try it again. Control Click, now it's a new object. Sometimes it'll whiff. It's a ponder of mine. Why does it happen? And I'm, I just looked at it from front view and now I'm using numpad seven to look at it from top view. We're just gonna rotate it a couple of clicks over with the uh, numpad four and hope that we're right. So this is where we can't use uh, mesh machine symmetry, but we could definitely use hop symmetry where we could press D, switch over to modifier and apply, change our view to cursor, change our pivot point or change our orientation to view and let's just mirror this over to the other side and hope for the best. And we see that now we have this piece mirrored to the other side. So like I said, sometimes I'll just be complaining about a solution and it will present itself. So, you know, mirror in all its complexity, it's, it's good. It's good. It solves some problems. It solves all of the problems that I run into. And that's kind of a meter that I have internally for something success. Like once it's able to solve all the problems that are thrown at it by me, then, you know, we can stop revisiting it in such a critical nature in a, in a state of it needs this, it needs this, it needs, this needs to be fixed, you know, all of that stuff. So let's take this in local mode and we look at our handiwork and that was actually quite easy, but you know, we still got to do some sub D solving for this bottom area, but Let's see what it looks like with subdivision. And that's actually not bad either. I mean, sometimes this is the bottom of this piece. I don't even know if these people cared, but we're gonna pretend that they did. So with this particular piece, we have the ability to, with this still selected to just delete it. And so I'm gonna select this, control J, and we will join it. And this geometry is like, hey, that's cool and all, but who is this? I mean, who is this? And I get it. Who is this? <laughs> who is this geometry? We just brought some very strange geometry to town. This is like a season two, all the actors got replaced situation. So we got Verdi Mergy on and Verdi Mergy will, will clean things up. We'll get some of these unwanted characters out of here and try to uh, raise the appeal of the new, ca new cast so they catch on by having them hang out with the old characters. You know, maybe bring in some of the fired actors who were lenient to act for a couple of episodes, which is what we're getting in these areas. And over here, everything's just all good in the hood. So merge by distance. And how much merge? Not enough, not enough. So who's the truth? We'll, we'll take this one as the true. Kind of some big jumps, but it happens in a, se in a season premiere. And let us select this edge and we remove the tape, which makes everything canon. And now this is our new show. So I see a junction point of curiosity happening in this area and I need to talk about it. And by talk about it, I mean, we're gonna add in the loop. We're gonna replace that area. 
reshuffle that problem downstairs one level, reflatten this area out. And we have so much new geo added that I almost feel like we shouldn't even have junction issues, but you know what? Let's just solve it, resolve and clean. And now everything's all quads again. So, I mean, it really depends on your layer of obsession, level of obsession with these. I don't feel that they are completely even because of this pop out. So let's clean it up the only way we know how slide up, slide down, slide it back and cut me some slack. No, I'm kidding. But, um, you know, that's, that's what you say when you do this, uh, up and back, cut me some slack and hopefully it works. It's like a, um, you know, modeling, um, superstition. Uh, try saying it sometimes up and back. All right. So here we're looking at this. I'm still looking at this surface, wondering what's making that weird shading thing. So I'm just going to turn off shadows, which is like turning on the lights in an office. I was about to say something truly terrible there that was inappropriate. I'm uh, probably wondering what that could be. That's that's definitely the best time for the worst jokes is when it's entirely inappropriate. All right, so SC0, SC0, really just getting kind of intimate with this and it's really no need for this. I'm just the type of guy who will get very personal with the surface especially one that isn't looking at least passable. It's got to look passable. If it can't pass, then um, we got to renegotiate. So let's just slide these pieces in, maybe to something like. So I had a crazy blue screen of death. So I guess that means I should probably move a little faster. So let me double check and make sure my other microphone is still on. For all the people that complain about my audio, I actually wear two microphones. Not even using my headset mic, which is also supposed to be a pretty good mic. But it's like we also got put back a little bit on our progress, which is good because I get to reevaluate my decisions. And by reevaluate, I mean make the exact same decisions. Maybe something like that with us making this a quad and offsetting our try just two spaces and really just a lot of sacrifice to the curvature of this might find ourselves reprojected to a cylinder down the road. But for this, we don't even need to have a tri formation, but maybe something like that looking a little bit more relaxed with this area. We have it just too tight too big of a geometric cluster causing subdivision to of course be subdivision so we've definitely relaxed this surface a little bit and now we have to get in and address this one this corner will be the fight that never ends so we might as well just tighten her up look at her wonder if it's worth it is it worth it is it worth it this is the underbelly of this thing. People are going to be looking at this thing from here. So, yeah, this corner is going to be kind of important. Like the John Connor of corners. Why is this corner so important? So, first things first, let's planarize it. So, I'm going to snap my 3D cursor to this area. And we're going to use C circle select with face in order to just paint our selection. And it blue screened so hard a minute ago. I was just saying I, I'm planning to use this computer for like the next 10 years. Maybe not 10 years, maybe next processor generation. Just kidding. But I am not the kind of person to replace a computer. Like look at computers like dogs. I assume people keep dogs forever and unconditionally don't replace their dogs. A shout out to the people out there replacing their dogs. No, I'm kidding. There's no one out there replacing their dogs on the regular. That is truly cruel. 
so now the next thing to address is this area does it truly truly need to exist and if so does it need to exist so close to this other one well split second decision was your answer I'm going to slide it away and then slide it back and we're gonna grab this piece all the way to here using control click the official selection method of in gone modeling or impartial modeling or just modeling in general there's no official anything for anybody just get in there and use it in the cases that require it so let's slide this down really relaxing this area because we're going to require that this has a loop and that means that there's going to be a loop required later which can alleviate that area i mean we could actually give this whole area enough loops to really quell the rebellion that we had brewing in this area that we just rounded up all the points in the town center and made them point made them triangles you know probably the easiest term but you know sometimes you gotta do that with unruly geo especially that that darn unsolved quad gang you know just rolling into town thinking they can just trash bars they found out fast there's a new sheriff in town and that sheriff doesn't entirely have this side section straight which is questionable just seeing this is questionable one of the dangers of solving just getting in there and realizing man I solved it incorrectly so now you gotta make these risky unsanctioned maneuvers these maneuvers aren't safe and there's the polls to prove it to prove that you know we're out there risking it all let's press E in order to orient it perfectly to this edge which will make that nicely rounded and having all this tension for a redirect is really what's killing it we need something head on straight to just put these verts in the right direction I mean it's tough this in itself causes redirects but like I said I always see like this um, invisible tension meter on the geometry I can feel it being stressed in pain like the live stream except I'm Sephiroth I'm going to turn it all into end guns when you aren't looking so maybe something like that and we want to bring one more in which will solve this area not the best solution also we're being super obsessive with this geometry especially for what we're trying to create here I mean we're six minutes into this really just talking about some nitty-gritty geometry cleanup just on a fundamental level when really we could be correcting things up after the fact once we complete construction I mean in fact why on earth did we convert this to subdivision so early what am i doing so the next thing are these little legs so i am going to alt scroll up to ingon line and we can press d and get out of cut and just be in or be out of knife and be a regular um cut which if you have nothing selected you're just going to draw a make shape like you see me doing here and it's actually set to center which is what I would normally expect from make at such an angle and really you could have just extruded a, got a plane or a box or something extruded it to and just called it a day but let's press E click to apply and how do we want to deal with this well I'm going to control a visual geometry to mesh and I see a couple of shapes in here that we probably need to get ASAP so I'm going to press E alt S and push this and because it's just a planar shape it should push out pretty um, pretty basic however SY SY zero just to make sure you know, where we can exert absolute control the other thing is we could also place a loop cut directly along this 
and what we want to do is extrude up directly up SZ zero to get something like this and let's bring the shape back to this shape but since we have vertex step I can just press GX bring it back to something like this and then we can press GZ and bring it to something like this which will absolutely merge it into that surface giving us this shape as a result so that kind of looks like the picture even though also see there's a big hole in it so now I have to make my least favorite thing and that's a refinement because I see additional shapes that we will need to achieve and also as I look at the other shapes involved I, I see things that assist me with getting the scales in line but don't take my word for it I probably need an optometrist so let's just press Control B to bevel this all the way to this vert and then we're just going to remove doubles but let's raise our point count so it's maybe something like that but we don't want to get rid of that edge we don't know why the edge is there but maybe there's a reason and looking at the picture all I see is a blur so let's add a blur in here and by blur I mean I was trying to think of something real quick to uh, fill in make an acronym like bilateral um, underrepresented shape or so I don't know but um, let's just um, add a wedge in here modeling wise and also let's place a loop in the middle origin to selection and we could just get rid of that loop because when we mirror it, it'll put that loop back for us it doesn't matter and for this area if we just want to solve it topologically uh, we don't want to give ourselves too much trouble I mean it's literally a blur why should a blur be hard but let's make it a hard, no I'm kidding. But we will just bring the shape in and just set it up like so. And at the bottom I see there's a flatty, so let's just press D, go over to box, draw a box. Nah, that's about right. And also a circle. There's a circle. We'll assume that the circle is not inter interfering with the flatty bottom. All right, even though it does look dangerously close to this, we're gonna pretend like we don't see that and also I think there's like a ring going through it I'm gonna have to really check out the game and, and look at the asset one more time because I never played this particular Metroid game but I was just watching a let's play and it just looked like it was a good time I mean not the game game looked um, like Metroid like I said don't don't hate me for my for my take on Metroid prompt but I did did play them I especially love the second one because I could play with my friends, but I had no friends who I could play Metroid Prime 2 with. It's a lonely time. Let's alt X, jump to the other side. With our circle, we are just going to select. There's in gone in box cutter and edit mode, driving me nuts again. Coming next on box cutter, a solution to that. But. You know, everything's a monkey's paw. Got to consider the, the possible damage of changing systems, especially once those systems have had all their bugs removed. So I'm going to select this edge, dissolve it, which should make everything nice and flat. We'll get rid of that. And you're probably wondering why I've done all this edge reworking. And that's because whenever I bevel this, I don't want my bevels to be all skewed. But if they were all, if they would have, um, if I would have used it the way I normally would have, this would have been like all terrible. But if we have all the edges flowing out of the circle in a nice way, in a nice direction. In fact, this one was not flowing very nice. So we see that the edge requires just a small amount of correction by us. You know, it's not Blender's fault. It's someone's fault though. Sending this up the chain, get me pictures of Spider-Man. So, what are we going to do with this? You know, all these jokes, and we have no idea how we're going to quad this shape. How are we going to do it? Also, I see additional details in there, like, that looks like a piston. Well, let's pretend it was a piston. Also, the rotation is a little advanced, you know, like something like that. but we can't rotate it too much because we already specified our flatty. 
we rotate too much, we got to re re specify our, our flatty. But also, I'm just looking at this shape with subdivision, just wandering. You know, can we can we do a little better? And same thing here. Let's press E, F in order to flip which one we're sliding at, which will get us perfectly up against that edge. Can't stress how um, crazy of a thing that is. That will be so great for all you subdivision modelers out there. So for this area, we're just going to turn both of these into tries because they're unsolved mysteries, which will make them quads, causing that to become a redirect. So we just turn that area into a uh, <laughs> into a uh, area for traffic, which we probably didn't want because it's right next to a junction area as well. But you live and you learn. But we live to do better than that. I think I was watching Weld eat that thing's lunch just now. <laughs> uh, we just like fed some piranhas just a second for just a second. I saw it. So back to this thing, pistons. I don't know what I'm seeing there. I just see shadows, but we're going to extrapolate and do a shape like that, cut all the way through, and it didn't work out because of our mirror being a bisecting shape splitting mirror. So now this is what we have. I don't know why everything got marked just then, but this will this will do us better. Maybe. You know, everything we do is to add a little bit more work. Really have some fun with this process. It's like Super Mario Brothers 2. Once I wake up, the dream is over. That's why they never made another Super Mario Brothers 2. I don't even know if they ever made another Doki Doki Panic. They just took that one, made it in Super Mario 2, and then that was the end of that legend. So let's subdivide this, and we'll add a loop. And we'll select these two. J, dissolve that point really getting messy here but you know with these junction areas I'm starting to really uh, made a mistake there um uh, is what the mayor of Springfield would say so let's just grab these edges and also let's re bisect this thing because now it is truly mirrored what are we going to do we're gonna mirror, we're gonna bevel this, and this thing's gonna just pop out like a glass eyeball. But it's fine. We just rebuild it. It's fine. We look at this area. It also pops out like a glass eyeball. We press J to rebuild these points. It's fine. So now we have to grab these, add our spacer, and turning this into subdivision is really just you know, nothing. Just us getting in, solving, keeping the planes, but also if we do have any additional edges, those edges need to be reinforcing these turn areas in order to minimize the amount of subdivision uh, curvature that happens whenever subdivision is added onto this model. So let's just slide this over. We'll grab these pieces, grab that, dissolve it, and we want to marry those two pieces and so I can already tell you that we're pretty much almost all the way there when it comes to um, converting the shape to subdivision except I would add subdivision and it would make a full out of me immediately and make a shape that would show me a shape that it's not capable of subdivision so let's solve it a little bit further so we don't have a lot of time to design we're just getting in here making our shapes, making shapes and taking names, but not naming shapes. <laughs> no, no shape naming. I, you never hear me talking about naming meshes. Who does mesh? Oh, cube 009006609, send him forward. We shall have words with this cube. How dare you act up in the utopia of Box City you know, sometimes you just gotta get with your cubes like that. 
It's a real, real tight dystopia where I keep my cubes at. Most of them relax knowing they'll never be loaded again. But some, some go to the demo where they're shown to you, the users, to showcase features. But in all honesty, I do try to, um, I do debate on most demos if I should demonstrate using, you know, current assets that I'm working on, like cool stuff. But I feel like it's distracting. So I always default to cubes in these, in these uh, tool demos. So I don't know, that one's a, definitely a ponder. But over time, I've noticed that people are more, more like, oh my God, what about this model in the video? It's like, what about it? We're talking about this checkbox that we added, which I feel is also kind of a letdown. Just be showing a car. Speaking of which, I was watching a video about a prankster, not even a prankster. It was a guy who was uh, doing a phone giveaway and the person he gave it to <laughs> kept recording after he was done filming his phone giveaway video and he's on camera said, oh, okay, I need the phone back. Uh, you know, I can't afford to give you that phone. It's not even a real phone. You know, all this stuff to get the phone back. Just, um, you know, giveaway channels are the new pranksters. You know, back in the day, it used to be great watching, you know, pranks in the hood gone wrong, you know, because pranks in the hood is just great. But then they were all fake. I mean, they were still probably getting punched in the face a little bit, but it was an era. But yeah, now it's giveaways. I mean, I'm not trying to get into giveaways on that level. I'm not trying to be a scammer, but... We do talk about it often that we should do some sort of community events. Like I'm always pondering a type of contest where people can actually win like, um, I don't know, a computer, you know, something worthy, but gotta, gotta keep it fair. Can't be uh, letting cheaters win like Call of Duty or Titanfall. All these games just get destroyed right now. So let's take this object in local mode and we're just talking and modeling. I mean, what else is there to talk about this modeling? Hey guys, I beveled this edge. No, I'm kidding, but I did. I, be I beveled that edge and I don't know if I liked it. Let's look at it in subdivision. I didn't actually bevel it in the end. But we look at this mesh and subdivision and this area just falls apart. I mean, if we go under our add modifier and we add a triangulate and we place it above the subdivision, we see that we're able to hold the form together a little better. But this area is just looking like yesterday's lunch if you vomited it up. So let us just flatten this out, SX. Just see what we get whenever we slide and press E and F, we get nothing good in that case. You know, you, you win some, you lose some. So let's just finish off the connection like so. And then we want to give this area an edge of reinforcement. We can press E, F in order to align ourselves precisely to this bottom flow. If we want to precisely keep it, just how great that thing is, press E in order to align directly to this edge. Press J and from here, let's just jump in the knife and continue making these connections. So, wow, these videos get so long when you are turning everything into subdividable geometry. Jeez Louise. So hopefully you guys are showing your support for this event, for it is truly grueling. We press M, merge it last. Show your support by picking up the box cutter supplemental pack, which is on Gumroad, link in the description, I guess, or buying a copy of Hard Opt for your grandma. No, I'm kidding, that, that's crazy. 
uh, that's a that's another scam where they sell stuff to uh, geriatrics. I, I definitely am not endorsing that. I'm not trying to become hush puppy here. So let's just slide this in. And this area is really questionable. But with subdivision, it becomes less questionable. I mean, auto smooth is being auto smooth right now, being so auto smooth. But we see that this area just, I don't know. I, I've looked at a lot of corners and I often find that just simplicity with a corner is just easiest. I, I try giving it all the excuses. I'm like, but my dog ate my homework, but the bus was late, but all this stuff. And subdivisions like pinch, 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 and not. Like not too, it's like, yes, not only not triple knots, get out of here, you bum. The subdivision, that's just how she is. Subdivision's a cruel, cruel mistress. I mean, a uh, auditor, not even a mistress, because we press control B and this area right here gets so crazy. So let's um, simplify its solution a bit. And something like that is edible. And on this side, we're also looking at the same situation. I don't know why I'm working this area so hard. It's literally a blur in a photo. You know, that's the dangers of zoning out while modeling. You'll You'll be working some blurs. It's like, what's this blur? You know, thinking about Sonic Adventure in my head as I say that. You know, that game also had some blurs. Like, I love these games in the past that had, like, JPEG assets that were just JPEGs. It's like, wow, these designers, they, they were like, okay, what do we have to use? Okay. We can do this. Just JPEGs, no met, no metallicity, no specular. No, well, I mean, you know, these are back in the day on PlayStation One, so they had no idea about PBR or any of that. They didn't even get to the workflow um, of requiring spec maps when it came on PS One. I don't know, maybe a couple of games, knowing me being wrong. But for this, what do we want to do? Do we want to bring a loop all the way across? from the top rope, maybe, you know, maybe we wanna bring that loop from the top rope, but we do wanna place it directly in the middle. And this piece is slowly getting sharpened up as we refine our solution. So for this piece, I could press I, which will inset, which always gives me just a few extra pulls that I don't need. Maybe I do need them, I just don't know that I need them yet. So let us just grab these two, subdivide. That means we put a loop here, put a loop here. And with this particular loop, I'm going to slide up to this area real cool like, you know, hey guys, I've been here this whole time, says this loop. Like I've been here this whole time. This is just, I'm just holding down my territory. And so the loop's like, okay. So, you know, now they're um, inside. <laughs> I was about to talk about selling crack cocaine. Let's not do that. So let's control click, jump to here. And I would press E and F, but they're probably gonna disappoint. And we're 26 minutes in. Working just some individual leg, like lunatics. I'm telling you, just so much extra time but we're having fun let's control R slide in a loop let's control R give this area a loop you know we're just being friendly with loops today just you get a loop you get a loop who are you you get a loop were you here this whole time you get a loop you know there's a loop for every area here that requires it, especially if you're a perimeter holder. If you got their perimeter card, you get a loop. You get a straight loop, no tries, because we don't want to mess with your junction and cause unnecessary pole deformation. And for this one, you get 
consolidate, you get consolidated, all these get consolidated, and we can just dissolve those points in the middle and really think about how we want to go about ending this. So I'm going to jump to here, add a loop, jump to here, it's over. In fact, we can grab these two and really bring them in if we want to tighten it up, but I don't even think this is going to be showing in the final result. We're just solving for the sub D. We're just giving it the D just so we can quickly just roll on out of here because, geez, how much time have we spent on this? I mean, we can still grab this, uh, shift click to curve extract this and make it its own piece and we could just scale that out. And let's place it before the subdivision and we see that's regrettable. So let's get rid of the triangulate, Alt V to look at the uh, wireframe and maybe something like that. And let's also put a bevel on it, maybe with a three. So maybe something like that. And then we can put a subdivision afterwards. And geez, this thing got beat up. Who did this to my mesh? We got our mirror, then we solidify, then we bevel, then we bevel. Okay, so we bevel, but we're using the angle of 30. And because we're using the angle of 30, we're grabbing too many of the wrong edges. So we raise our angle higher than 30 to something else, anything else that's not 30. And we see that we're now able to basically bevel this part. So a little vigilance goes a long way. This area, highly suspicious. So what do we do about it? What do we do about the suspicious area? We're just going to join, dissolve, and diamond quad it. Diamond quad it looks a lot better than the double triangulation action we were just looking at in our face. So let's come out of local mode and this is our piece so far. So subdivision friendly, you know, it costs. You're probably looking at this wondering like, wow, what a process. Like, yeah, that's what it takes to make a subdivision friendly mesh. Um, that's why you're paid the big bucks. Unless you're um, not, in which case, um, I can condolence it. So I'm going to uh, parent this to this piece and press control P and we're just going to Alt G and then R90 and then shift R twice so that way we can place it precisely where we need it, which is about here. And I think it's like sticking out of this area. I mean, we could duplicate our piece and start working on that part, but we're just getting crazy at that point. So I want to m rotate this around this because this thing's origin is not in the same area. And more likely when we mirror, remare, it's going to get weird. So maybe let's not, but I don't, I don't want to mirror like that. I, I definitely want to mirror on the Y and then apply the scale. So that way we have it, we'll flip the normals just to correct it, save the file, alt X, X, and let's uh, let's just r do the radial array first. So we select these two objects, and if I shift click radial array, we're now radialing around object A. And so we can just Alt X, mirror, we'll choose modifier, and let's just send that directly to the top of the stack. We don't need triangulate anymore because we have no mistakes. Just kidding. We probably do have mistakes. Don't want to talk about them. All right, so with this shape selected, let's remove the mirror again. And we're just gonna select this shape and do the same thing. And because we, hmm. What happened? So with this one, maybe what we wanna do is actually apply our mirror modifier and then select both of these and shift click radial array, which will place it precisely where we need it. Don't want any weirdness, just trying to radial array around this thing. And this thing should still be parented, good. If we wanted to rotate it, we would have to do it now in edit mode. So that's a little icky, but that, that is life. But we could rotate it if we need to. I mean, really just analyzing it, looking at the picture, thinking, do I need to rotate it? Mm. Not, not today. So we're just going to add a curve and a circle, Alt-G to place it back in the center. And we are just going to scale it to fit and Q, adjust curve, and just set this up. So whenever it comes to curves in us and hard ops, if you adjust it through the modal, 
you can hold control in order to roll the segments. I was about to say shift, but you see that I'm able to roll to adjust the amount of segments. So if I wanted to like go for a really non-destructive type low poly curve, I could go for something like that where basically it's a low amount of segments, but it has two layers of subdivision in order to round it out. So we definitely get a nice fine result. However, I think it's, the circle is definitely a lot smaller. So let's get back to analyzing our image and we can begin wrapping this up for this has been a long video and we've been looking at this in wireframe this entire time like like a bunch of lunatics. So let's get rid of our empties and begin dealing with this piece in the middle. So a cylinder, you know, if I had Pokemon cylinder, that's my Pikachu cylinder. And so we want to scale it to something like that so we can make it fit. However, before that, I ponder if we need an additional loop happening in this particular area. So I'm going to extrude this point and snap here, snap my 3D cursor here, and then from here, delete this vert. And we're just going to grab this row and use the 3D cursor as our scaling point. We'll press S in order to move it out just kind of evenly without really um, disrupting the shape. And then we can add an additional loop, give this a loop, extrude it down, and then we definitely want to delete this face while we're thinking about it, because if we forget about it, it'll um, haunt us. And we get a bevel in, which we're already using a profile bevel, so no questions there. And just something like that, just this little extra ring, just because of what I'm seeing there, it just looks like there's an extra ring for what we're about to do. So. I'm going to turn off extras, which means I still see, okay, that's my symmetry mesh. I was going to say it should hide empties when you turn off extras, but I still need extras. I just don't want to see them. And I just realized the other day that extras turns off extras, just extras. So for this, let's get out of 3D cursor as our pivot point and we'll just scale this in and then bring the shape out like so. And whenever I have to deal with these sort of situations, I always scale it in a bit on the base and then I scale out a bit on the outside. And you know, keep in mind, we're just eyeballing this. I'm just going to control B bevel it, roll a couple of segments in, just click and apply. And we're just going to need to use the F9 to set our shape back to 0.5, giving us something like this as a result. And really make a hard decision. You know, is that the result? Uh, probably. So let's press P, get something like that. Select this face, press I, we can press X, delete these faces. And let's look at it from top view. And we can press control F and choose grid fill. We'll roll the wheel until we have it looking at us head on. Just me being weird with looking at these things head on. And after hitting set smooth, we realized that the bottom face needs to be dealt with. And by dealt with, I mean removed. The, the most linear way to deal with things. So this is what we're looking at so far with our shape. And we've only been at this for probably more than an hour because the crash has restarted my timer. Um, otherwise, I would work at a pace that would um, aim to be done by now. So let's take this edge and I'm just going to control click curve extract because I want to make up my own mesh, but sometimes it's a lot of work to do it the blender way, which is just shift D P selecting it, having an edit mode, reselecting. I don't know. Um, I felt there was a better way. And so that's part of why curve extract does that. So I'm just extruding this in. We're looking at an edit mode, which is just no, no for me. And with this edge, we're just going to shift click EM macro, which will push the edge in and then holding control, we can perform a push like so until we get it looking just right. Maybe something like that. Let's press I to inset it. And then we can alt click EM macro in order to push this piece out. So we get something like that, but we see that subdivision is really just having its way with this mesh. So I'm going to add a bevel but we're going to shift scroll it up one level and press three in order to add a subdivision bevel or basically a profile one bevel. So after adding that, we see that the mesh is a lot more understandable. 
or a lot more understanding of, the, of our pain. In fact, we could mark specific edges to deal with this, and that will really simplify it a bit as well. So we select this one, Control B, not going to work out. All right, let's continue our struggle. So I'm going to Control B and give this the protection it needs. And we can just dissolve this edge, which will just let subdivision take it. So we see that just letting Bevel handle it is a little hardcore. We're probably best just getting in here, just selecting the boundaries and just subdividing it ourselves. In fact, let's deal with these on an individual level. So maybe something like that. And then for this piece, we'll grow it SZ, reselect the boundary, and we'll just give it something a little bit more generous. So I don't know, I'm just being weird with it. Um, like I said, I'm just looking at blurry images at this point, so I'm, I'm already insane in the membrane. So we're looking at this from top view. We'll delete that face, select these two, grid fill, F9, control, roll the wheel in order to get something a little bit nicer. So with these two, really looking at these images, it's like that's rounded and that's rounded. So that means that we got to give it a pretty generous amount. And for this area, we got to give it just that amount. And we end up with something like that as our top shape, which looks like something you would attach to a flashlight. So let's make a few adjustments. We're just going to grab this piece and bring it down, scale it out, maybe add one additional loop, two additional loops. And from here, let's pull back and look at our results. So this result isn't so much on top of the shape as much as it's kind of a part of the shape and what's happening underneath is a part of the result. So scaling it down, we're still in three cursor mode, I guess, or not, let's uh, origin to geometry. And maybe something like that. So from here, we're just going to grab these, this top area, control plus until we have enough. Control X to dissolve it. Maybe grab this entire loop. Control X to dissolve it. I, X, regrid fill, re F9, control roll. And now we have something looking a little more agreeable. So also it looks like it's a little bit more contour to the shape that it would have been. So for that, we have an opportunity to talk about the wedge option and hop switch or not wedge, taper to form, which also includes wedge, but we're not needing wedge for this. Let us select this shape and go under mesh tools and there's an option for taper to form. So if you go into this, you can begin deforming it using a taper. So we really just want it something like that. Looks like the first option is actually the one we need. So maybe something like that. And then we could always use something like modifier scroll and just tab to control click or shift click lattice to reveal the lattice so somewhere out there is our lattice where's our lattice in fact i don't even see it in the outliner where is this taper lattice at there it is so weird, I don't know why it was, oh, extras is off. I shouldn't have done that, you know. Turn off extras, you stop seeing extras. Maybe even at a time when you really need extras, like this time. So I'm just using this lattice that is already set up in kind of a wedge formation to just deform this shape and get something a little bit more acceptable. I'm a big fan of lattices and their ability to deform very serious mesh objects without a whole lot of destruction. So for this, I'm just going to use Alt M and we'll at least shift click blank material to give it a blank material of glass. So that way we can see through it and admire what's going on on the inside. So with that, we have now got to the end result of us just modeling this quick shape and also activating the stipulation for this month of converting it into a subdivision object, which is its own terrible pain in the neck so we take this alt click 
checked out has an emission material if we alt v v we can look at different environments but i'll press v to turn environment display off we can at least press q to activate the ability to see the glare in the viewport so i get a lot of questions sometimes about the materials from hops especially the emission the emissive materials um if you don't want it to pulse you can just add a random emissive material just through blender you don't actually have to use us but i don't know why i'm even having to say that in this video so i'm just going to select this area and we see that there's one last area that was not turned into a quad so ready to be burned at the stake guys uh we press q go under materials and we add a mission to this as well a mission um and let's also select a few loops get in just slap some blank materials on it let's grab this loop Control plus a couple of times just add a blank material we're just rolling the gambit of the blank material lottery in fact this area also has a unique material according to the image that i was looking at but question is do we want that smoke do we want to separate this out and try to give it a unique material and you know i would say probably probably so probably so so we look at this mesh and it's so lonely um and also looks terrible so let's put our bevel back and we give it a metal material and we're back in business you know no no longer needing to talk about it. also this thing is like blue in the picture uh we we can we can go for that i mean i'm no color expert but i'm just a seance of blue right now just aiming trying to aim for that jackpot and that's as close as I think I can get it in this attempt. So just pulling back and looking at our handiwork, we can also give this the same materials, everything else looks really crazy, shiny. So I'm just going to go into material scroll, scroll it down to something more reasonable. And let's actually shift click material scroll to replace this particular material. Don't want to use map scroll, um, but just regular material scroll, just so we can get this to a nice result and with everything selected i'm going to press qlt so we can just add a shape and i'll choose plane from the spacebar menu control roll to place it at the bottom and we'll press s50 in order to scale it out and from here just shift click material scroll in order to scroll through blank materials on this plane after assigning it with the blank material and we're now looking at our finished result so i can just um Control A, insert a camera. Maybe there is a camera here. Maybe there isn't. But we're just going to control alt numpad zero in order to face our camera to view. And let's change the focal length of our camera to something like 120. And then we can pull it out. In the Q menu, we can lower the PP, which will give us dark edges. And at this point, we could definitely toggle off viewport overlay since we're looking at the rendering aspect of just getting a very basic presentation for this asset that was a little bit more of a struggle than I anticipated. So if we press Alt VB, we're now scrolling through blank light. So we're just looking for a setup that really just kind of symbolizes the struggle that embodies today's youth. So maybe something like that, <laughs> that really embodies today's youth. Um, and we'll press Alt VV so we're cycling through environments again and just really looking for just a perfect look dev environment in order to present this in an effective manner. So there's a video on my channel called Look Dev Simple if you want to know more about adding additional environments to your look dev in order to have additional settings to scroll through instead of just the Blender normal defaults. However, when it comes to a look dev environment, there's like a million looks in them ranging from the darker to the lighter. So I've been trying to get a little bit more on the light side nowadays. However, let's press Alt VV again. We could press S in order to cycle again, except I want to press X to adjust my strength. And we can actually lower the strength and have it just be reflective of the lighting that's in the scene. But I'm just going to keep going through environments because I do want something that offers just a little bit more as far as the reflections go. I'll know when I get there maybe something like that and then we click and apply 
and we can truly wrap this up. So really this has been quite a long video. I thank everyone for watching. Um, for one last peruse through our scene, let us activate our viewport overlays and turn on wireframe and we can turn off relationship lines, 3D cursor. I believe everything else that's not needed to be shown is already off screen. And before we start this tour, this tour, I felt like a New Yorker there for a moment. Um, let's just slide this around until we get something a little more relaxed. And now I can grab this space mouse that's on the desk and we can begin just gliding around our surface. So the topology really comes through, especially with the glare just overshadowing it, but we're just looking at our topological solutions that we've come up with today. And we're gonna have to select this lag tab in edit mode and look at the other side and wonder, you know, how did this get through? Quality assurance, no, I'm kidding, it was me. I'm quality assurance, that's why I got through. If we add a loop all the way through, it will be regrettable. So we need to give it a loop alternatively. So that means reinforcement on this side. So now we have that flow, that flow, that flow, that flow, that flow. So just flowing all over the place. Call me a plumber. So anyways, control S, deselect, and back to our Peru. So really basic, but another way to demonstrate kind of radial solutions whenever it comes to dealing with radial array in hard ops and using it in a all quad system. I mean, if we really wanted to get nitpicky, we could take this in local mode and let us just control A, visual geometry to mesh. We will press I, X. I wish when you deleted it, it just selected the boundary for you. And something like that. And we could just press Alt X, send it below. However, we need to set the origin between these two edges so that way when we send it below, Let's see, origin to geometry. And let's try it again, alt X, send it below. Really just struggling to send it below. Our geometry has been kept below. So let's get back out again and our Perus tour continues of us just looking around our geometry. All quads, look at all beautiful. I mean, maybe not all quads, you know, like I said, the all quad stipulation is a myth, but you know, I'll do the best I can. I can correct it to a certain degree, but it's just us getting in here, looking at our geometry and admiring the results. So, you know, I guarantee you there's ways that it can be done better. And there's probably better images of the game that could probably help you with getting the exact result. Also, I could probably have stand, stood to put the missile pod on the inside with this shape. It is subdivided, just wanted to make sure for a moment. I just wasn't sure if it was subdivided. Let's also choose to turn off grid floor and our axes just so we're actually looking at just the wireframe and we get in here and begin looking at it again. So I almost feel like there should be some tries happening around that area, but it looks like it's doing pretty good. And then we look at our base where we have two variable solutions happening on both sides but they both managed to hold the perimeter in a very particular way. With this particular piece, we should have added something on the inside, like a cylinder or something to assist us with being able to connect. I mean, more than likely that's why this big hole is there. So let's take a moment to do that because it ain't nothing to us. I mean, really we're taking liberties at this point, but let's shift A, add a cylinder, rotate it 90. It is so hot in my office. Like I have to end this video and I should turn on this fan behind me. This fan's all the way across the room. Here, listen to this fan. Loudest fan ever. So maybe something like that. And we can just put a bevel on it, press three for a subdivision bevel. And just like that, we're good to go. So we just slap one of these metals on it. Maybe something like that. We grab all of these and just bring it up to something like that. And don't crucify me for not cutting a hole in the end of this and topologically solving it, you animals. So we select 
this piece, let's see, we select this piece and this piece and shift click radial array so we radiate around it but we want to roll it up to six and not three so that way we have one in every hole. So now let us go back to look dev where we're admiring our handiwork at the very end and finally we can wrap up this video. So while this was a slightly longer video, I just kind of zoned out in some geometric solutions there for a moment, we were able to get this to a satisfactory result. So instead of just sitting here patting ourselves on the back, I will just wrap up this video. And thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.